Welcome to Bioengineering 110, Foundations of Biomechanics. My name is Andrew McCulloch, and I'll be your instructor for this course. We're here on the landing page in Triton Ed for Bioengineering 110, and if we navigate to Syllabus, you'll find some important course information. Classes will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 12.20 p.m. in Centre Hall 105. My office is in Powerfolk Bioengineering Hall, room 231, and I have office hours by appointment. We have three TAs who will serve as your graduate student instructors, Christopher, Sydney, and Michael. They will hold discussion sessions on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which means that you'll have an opportunity to see one of us every day of the week. So let's go ahead and meet our TAs. Hi, my name is Christopher. I'm a third year uh, bioengineering PhD student, and I did my undergrad in biophysics. Uh, so feel free to reach me by email for any questions you have pertaining to physics. Hi, I'm Sydney, and I'll also be your TA this quarter. Um, I did my undergrad at Purdue in biomedical engineering with a focus on mechanics, and I'm a second year PhD student here. Hello, my name is Michael. Um, I am also a second year PhD student here. Uh, and I did my undergrad at Northwestern University in biomedical engineering. You should plan on attending one of the tutorial sessions per week. There may or may not be enough room for you to attend more than one. The objectives of Bioengineering 110 are to learn the concepts, notations, and theories, uh, and applications of statics, dynamics, and continuum mechanics to engineering problems in general, but in particular to problems in biomechanics. Some of the key concepts that we'll be covering include forces and moments, equilibrium, kinematics and kinetics of rigid body systems, stress and strain and strain rate, constitutive properties for stress in solid and fluid materials, and the governing field equations for conservation of mass, momentum and energy. Theoretical problem solving and the role of engineering design will be emphasized in weekly homeworks uh, and posted here on TED. And this course is a required prerequisite for Bioengineering 112A and 112B, where problems in biomechanics will be uh, studied in more detail and which will build on the mechanics foundations in this course uh, to get into more interesting and detailed problems in solid and fluid biomechanics. 112A will focus on biosolid mechanics, so the solid mechanics of uh, biological tissues, and 112B focuses on biofluid mechanics and cell mechanics. But first we need to learn more about mechanics, and so that's what 110 is all about. Now, this course is going to be flipped. So most of you know what that means, it means that the lectures will actually be here online as videos and you'll view them before you come to class. And then in class, we'll use that time to work together solving problems uh, and learning from each other and answering questions. To facilitate that process, we'll use clickers. And if you already have a clicker, then that's all you need to know. Just bring it to class. If you don't have a clicker, um, then you'll need to get one. So this is an iClicker 2. Uh, you can buy them, you will use from the bookstore. The iClicker 1 doesn't have the LED display and that will work too. Unfortunately, you can't use the iClicker Go app because that's not supported by UCSD, but uh, a used or new clicker will suffice. If you have a roommate or someone who's taking a different class where they use a clicker at a different time, you can use their clicker for this class and register it for this class, but you cannot, of course, lend your clicker to someone else, especially when you're uh, not going to be at present. Most of you probably used an iClicker like this for Bioengineering 1, and so if you still have that, it will work. You know, biomechanics involves um, new theoretical and physical concepts that take a while to understand and digest before we can use them. And so discussion and peer instruction and active learning and problem solving are the most effective use of the limited time we have in class. So it will be important for you to 
view the online videos before class, uh, you'll have a chance to upload questions. There will be a printout that you can make of the notes from the class, take notes on it, and come to class ready to ask questions. And so at the start of each class, we will, we will answer questions. And then we'll work on some problems, some examples. And we'll do this interactively. I'll get you to help me and tell me what the next step is. And we'll use clickers to get feedback. So um, come with your clicker, come with your notes, come with your questions, and come with a willingness to work with other students in your class to you know, really understand these concepts and, and solve problems. We know that everyone learns differently, and so that's why having notes and written material and visual material and audio material, we hope will um, help you to uh, take most greatest advantage of the course. We can also discuss homework assignments and do examples related to the homework in class, but the tutorials will really be the time when the TAs will do that. Now, there's no required textbook for this course. However, this book by Humphrey and DeLang, An Introduction to Biomechanics, Solids and Fluids, Analysis and Design, is the textbook for Bioengineering 112 A and B. So if you want to go ahead and get it now, it could be a useful reference for 110. It has some foundational mechanics material in it. Or if you want to wait and see if you can find a used copy or something, then by all means wait till the winter quarter to get it. One of the reasons you don't need this book now is because it's mostly on the biomechanics applications and we have to start by learning statics and dynamics. The textbook that I use on statics and dynamics is by Beer and Johnston. It's a classic engineering text. Um, and if you want to buy a book on statics and dynamics, this is the one to buy. But we'll only be doing a few weeks on statics and dynamics, so I don't expect you to buy this book. There are um, PowerPoint slides and examples online at the website for this book, so you may find uh, that more than sufficient for your needs. As we progress from statics and dynamics to continuum mechanics, and a good reference written by UCSD's own YC Fung is a first course in continuum mechanics. And uh, you could find used copies of this. Again, this is not required. All the notes and materials that you will need uh, will be in the class. Um, however, if you want a textbook on continuum mechanics, uh, that's a good one. And it has plenty of examples. The notations that I use actually come from a different book by Spencer called Continuum Mechanics. It's a Dover book and is quite uh, inexpensive now uh, on Amazon. But this book does not have lots of good examples. So it's good just for an example of a book on continuum mechanics that uses the notations that I use. But uh, in terms of examples and explanation, YC Fung's book is better. But again, I'm not requiring or even recommending that you buy any of these books. I know that they're expensive. Just letting you know my recommendation for books that are most closely related to the content of this course. So moving on to grading, 40% of the score will come from weekly homework assignments. Uh, there will probably be eight in total. And another 40% will come from the final exam, which will be a closed book exam. And then we will have regular clicker quizzes pretty much every day starting in the second week. And the way the clicker grading will work is that you'll get three points for just answering the question and five for getting the correct answers. And then at the end of the year, we'll drop your worst two sessions in computing your scores. You'll notice there isn't a midterm. I'll poll you about if you want to have a midterm. We could do a midterm with clickers quite quickly or we could have a more comprehensive midterm or even a take-home midterm. But because we're trying to cover so much material on statics, dynamics, and continuum mechanics in this class, to take a whole class out to have a midterm is only going to make it even harder for us. So as long as you're getting regular sort of feedback on your progress through the clicker quizzes, I don't think you'll need a midterm. But you will need to do your homeworks, and uh, they will come every week, as I mentioned, although we'll try to end have the last one be before the last week of the quarter.
Needless to say, the homework that you turn in must be your own, and because of the nature of this course, it must be handwritten. If your homework is a little bit late, then we'll still try and accept it. However, late homework will be subject to a penalty, and um, this is going to be at the discretion of the graders. The graders have suggested the following scheme, which they may change, and that is the homework will be considered late if it's submitted after the beginning of class on the day that the homework is due. The TAs will be there at the beginning of the class, they'll collect up the homeworks before I start and then they'll leave. And so if after that point it hasn't been received, it'll be late and you may be subject to a 15% penalty at that time. You can then turn it in on any subsequent day since there'll be a tutorial or lecture every day, but uh, you'll lose 10% each day. This is because the TAs are students too and you handing your work in late makes their job harder. Uh, and they're trying to study for other courses and do their research. While we encourage students studying together, and we actually will use peer learning in the classroom, you have to do your own work and hand in your own work, and cases of plagiarism, collaboration, or cheating will be treated as uh, cases of academic dishonesty and referred to the uh, academic integrity coordinator and the dean. We probably won't use computing in this class, but if we do, you can use the uh, computing lab in room 161 in PAL Folk Bioengineering Hall. So let's go back now and take a look at the schedule for this class, which you will also find on the content page at the top. So we'll start by giving an introduction to what biomechanics is, and then the first few weeks will be spent on statics and dynamics. So after a broad introduction to statics, dynamics, and continuum mechanics and their role in biomechanics, we'll introduce forces and moments and Newton's laws of motion and the special case of static equilibrium. And that special case of Newton's laws of motion for the case of static equilibrium is essentially the foundation of statics. So now with the laws of statics in hand, we can start to uh, apply the static equilibrium of linear and angular motion to consider the static equilibrium of rigid bodies. And the way we do this is by drawing free body diagrams. Then we'll talk about how we can use free body diagrams to understand systems, particularly systems with joints in them, uh, such as we encounter in biomechanics, where we have joints with muscles and ligaments and forces applied to them. Then we'll start to move from statics to dynamics and we'll look at kinematics, uh, angular velocity and acceleration, and how accelerations are associated with forces in non-static bodies. And so this is the study of kinetics. Then we'll finish by looking at work and energy, impulse and momentum. And uh, by the end of week four, we'll have done our short introduction to statics and dynamics. And that will allow us to spend the rest of the quarter on continuum mechanics. So we'll start by defining what a continuum is, and then we'll do some review on uh, some of the mathematics that we need, particularly matrices and matrix algebra, vectors and vector calculus. Then we'll introduce the important concept of a tensor and give some examples of tensors and look at how we do tensor calculus. With that, we're ready to introduce the important physical quantities of continuum mechanics, of which the most important is the stress tensor. So we'll start by introducing the stress tensor and then show how the equilibrium equations are obtained for uh, stresses in a body in equilibrium. Then we'll look at some of the tensors that describe deformation and shape change. These are the deformation gradient tensor and the strain tensor. And then we'll look at tensors that describe velocity fields and flows. And with these, we can now go ahead and derive the governing equations of continuum mechanics, which are conservation of mass, energy, and momentum. And so by then, we'll have reached the end of the quarter, and we'll have all of the mathematical and theoretical foundations of statics, dynamics, and continuum mechanics that we can then apply to the biomechanics of solid tissues in Bioengineering 112A uh, in the winter. So underneath the schedule here, find all the lecture notes. These are PDFs 
printouts like this. They're just handwritten printouts. Also on the content page. And these links here, these PDF links, are to those lecture notes. There'll be occasional handout. And then there'll also be uh, interactive video for every class. Now, you'll find those video links here on the interactive webcast folder. Or you can link to them clicking this link that says Play Posit. So PlayPosit is a site that broadcasts annotated versions of the videos, uh, like this one here. And you can see that the video includes like, some little sidebars and questions and so forth. Welcome to BE110. So now I'm showing you a video of a video, which is probably a bit too much. but. Uh, you can explore the videos on PlayPosit as you get into the class. Also, this is where you'll find the links to the homework assignments, and you'll see that homework assignment one has already been posted. So I think that's it for our class. We've talked about the website, the TAs, the tutorial times, the flipped format of the class, and the topics that we'll cover, the use of clickers, and where you'll find your notes, lectures, and homework assignments. So you can proceed now to view the first lecture for the class, my introduction to biomechanics, statics, dynamics, and continuum mechanics in biology, and come ready for the first day of class with your questions. I look forward to seeing you there.